Steve, how are you, buddy? Um, as you saw in my email, I was typing up an email and uh, it got a little bit cumbersome. And to be honest with you, it would have been kind of annoying to read. And I don't know if you can get everything out of the email. So I'm going to do a video to talk about the difference between the MS6-SVD version and the MS6-SVE version, which I have right here. Um, so I'm going to try to do this on one take. So bear with me if I start tripping up my words. I hope I hopefully I won't. And uh, let's get at it here. So you guys use the D version. Um, in the US and it sounds like in somewhere in Europe you might be using the E version and there's some, some Han Han going over it, okay? So D version. Uh, if we take a quick glance at it, from an from a internal guts mechanical point of view, both of these are the identical. So the internal guts of these, the, the D version is the same as the internal guts of the E version. Uh, there's two spools on the inside and uh, those two spools are for uh, redundancy obviously, right? Because it is a safety device. Um, that being said, because it is a safety device, um, it is up to the, the onus is up to the OEM or you guys to wire this thing uh, to a certain category, right? Both of these are the same way. They're just safety devices. Onus is on you guys to kind of wire them the way you, the way you uh, interpret the categories that you require, right? Um, physically looking at this thing, you will notice that there's coils up here, one for each spool. An M12 cable is going to go here, another M12 cable is going to go here, and if you look, you need to monitor the spools, so you have two sensors right here, and those sensors have two M12 cables as well. And then because this one has an optional uh, pressure uh, sensor on it as well, there's an M8 cable right here that's required. So long story short, you're going to have to have five cables running off of this device into your panel, right? Now, again, because this is a safety device, um, it's up to you guys to, uh, to make it function in whatever category or performance level that you guys need, right? So this device provides you with all the feedback and enables, and we run them into your panel and you guys do what you need to with it, right? Um, so the fundamental difference between the D and the E comes down to the wiring aspect of it or the logic aspect of it as well. Um, that's where they kind of start to differ, okay? So when I talk about the logic aspect of it, the biggest difference that this thing does, it's got an electrical, basically a little electrical box on the back, and it's got some obviously circuitry in, inside it. And uh, it takes the, what you see here as the, uh, the coils, builds it in, and it takes the sensors, it also builds it in. So there's physically a little bit of a difference, and I'll show you a picture of that right now, between the two. Um, so. What does that electrical box do is the biggest question, right? Um, it takes on a little bit of the logic uh, out of what you guys would do in your panel potentially, right? Now, like I said, you're running five cables into the panel. Uh, in this case, you would only be running one cable into the panel and then obviously the pressure sensor. So two cables back to the panel, right? Now, the logic built into this thing, the major, the core, uh, difference or the core feature of this thing, excuse me, is um, it allows it to do a self check because it's a safety device. It, it we we want it to do a self check, right? For example, this is a pills safety relay right here. It's a basic relay. If you cycle the power on this pills relay, it will do a self check. So this does a self check, and then this does a self check, and that self check logic is built into uh, the device. Whereas with this one, that self check logic would have to be done at the control panel. That is the biggest difference between the two. Uh, which one's better? Which one do I like? Honestly, I do not have a preference. Um, customers buy this one, do it themselves. Customers buy this one, does it for them, type of deal, right? So I don't have a I don't have a preference which one which one it is. Uh, it comes down to your controls team or your electrical engineering team to kind of see which way they want to go with that, right? Um, what does the self check look like? Let's just perform a quick self check here. Hold on, I'm gonna reset all this stuff here. Part by the way, ignore some of this. This is just for demo purposes, so it looks a little clunky here, but um, this would be a lot cleaner when you guys do it on internally, on, you know, in your panel or whatever, right? Um, so I'm going to, right now, it looks like it's on, but it's just the pressure sensor is getting a power supply from another uh, source. But uh, the safety PLC, or sorry, safety relay is off right now. The safety dump valve is off right now as well. Um, there are enable signals. I'm going to pull those because it doesn't really matter. But, um, okay, so there, there's no enable signal going to the, the valve right now, right? So basically when I turn the power on, it's not going to do anything other than kind of power itself up. So let's turn it on. And what you're going to notice is you're going you're gonna to hear the clicks from the safety relay 
perform a self-check and you're gonna wait a few seconds and this thing's gonna perform a self-check as well. And you'll hear a little blip of air because it's gonna cycle the spools to make sure that they're performing the way they should. All right, so you heard that. That clunking sound was basically this thing cycling itself uh, to do a self-check. Now, so since I don't have the enable signals on it right now, um, you're gonna see there's two LEDs on here because there's some logic built in. Sometimes there's some faults and stuff like that. So there's a green LED and a red LED. Uh, you're not gonna be able to see them through the camera, but there are they are up here, right? So it's sitting in a, a, a mode right now where it's ready to go. It just needs the enable signals to uh, get it going. Uh, if it sits in this mode for many, many hours, it will perform a self-check again once an hour. So if it's sitting without any enable signals on it, but the power's on, it will do a self-check once an hour. That is basically the biggest difference uh, between the two. Um, this e-version does have another little benefit that, uh, that might be potentially useful for you guys, and it's in the form of a manual or automatic mode. Uh, I, I'm gonna keep repeating, this thing can also do that, it's just kind of you guys have to do it inside your panel, right? So, which you guys probably do at this point, but um, the manual and automatic mode uh, in the connector for this thing, um, you can just jumper a wire from five and six, I believe, and it'll switch between manual or automatic mode. Uh, what is manual or automatic mode? Let me, uh, let me give you a quick example of that. Let me just plug these enable signals. This is, again, this is just clunky because it's a demo. Um, so right now I'm going to turn the power back on and I have it in manual mode and hold on. I'm gonna... So it does its little self check. Um, the E stops cleared. So right now I have to manually start it. All right. And if you can see on the gauge, it went up to 89 PSI. So it, it basically, as soon as I press start power went to the system, uh, E stop. E stops pressed, pressed, air is dumped as it's supposed to. Uh, e stop is reset. And uh, the relay over here is reset, but the downstream pressure still needs to be manually turned on. So I have to press it again, manually, and then the pressure goes downstream. So that's manual mode, pretty basic stuff, right? So let me just give you an example of um, E stop there. I'll reset the E stop. I'm going to turn this off for a second. I'm going to turn it into. I have a switch for automatic mode, which you could probably incorporate yourself. That's pretty straightforward for you guys to do. But okay, so it's in automatic mode right now, okay? E set, uh, resets. Sorry, E stop is uh, cleared. I'm going to turn the power back on. Relay does its thing. And then it automatically power, or sorry, it automatically turns on and pressure is downstream. So when I hit the when I hit an e-stop again, okay, it dumped like it's supposed to. I reset the e-stop, pressure is downstream again. E-stop, e-stop reset, it automatically does it. I don't have to push the start button. So that's basically it for automatic. That's kind of the, the fundamental feature has always been that uh, self-check and uh, that's basically it. Again, I don't have a preference which way to go with it. Um, at the end of the day, this is just a safety device. Both of these are just safety devices. How you guys wire them up into your safety circuit is, uh, is, is completely on you guys. And uh, I'd be happy to answer any more questions with regards to these things, but I think I covered it uh, from the most part in this video. Um, cheers to you, buddy, and I'll see you soon.